let's say to write a book, that's a very common one where I've helped people and, and, and no one really knows why they're getting stuck or can't write a book. They, you know, they, they just think they don't have the tools. They don't know if that's their goal for the year, I want to write a book. They don't understand why they might be getting stuck or why an old program is running. And let me give you an example. Someone phoned me and said, I've moved to the country, I sold my business and I'm trying to write. I've got I want to write a novel, but I also am doing some freelance writing work. So we began to do this work, tapping and talking. Well, the memory she went back to, you know, was the fact that when she was 11 and she was in love with writing and poetry, she went to her father, who was a Supreme Court judge in South Africa, and said, and shared this from her heart. And he had said these words in a very authoritative way. You can't just be a writer. And so she had gone off and and become a caterer, actually. Welcome to the Write the Book Inside You podcast. Tips, tools, and interviews for coaches and healers like you who want to write a non-fiction book to boost your visibility, clients, and cash flow while making a difference. I'm your host, Carol Westmore, a multi-published author and energy psychology tapping book coach. Now let's jump into today's episode. Rob Lawrence here, and today I'm speaking with Carol Westmore about her pioneering work in South Africa and worldwide about a method of goal setting and getting called EFT Matrix Goals Reimprinting, which she claims has a higher than average success rate. Carol is an author, a coach and a teacher who is passionate about helping others to break free to live the life that they love. She specialises in helping her clients get unstuck when their life loses meaning and direction and when they lose heart about achieving their goals and dreams. Carol, can you tell me about the dramatic turning point in your life from which you've written your book, You Can Break Free Fast? Yes, Rob. Well, what happened was I was always interested in self-transformation, self-help, because at some level I knew that um, I'd had quite a difficult childhood. I didn't realize how difficult until I began to really dig into the healing work that I do today. But um, the time came when through a variety of um, circumstances, I had a fire. I felt stuck in my 25-year marriage. I felt stuck that I wasn't on track with my life purpose, but I didn't know what to do about it. And then this big event happened that broke my heart because I lost my dog in the fire. I had to move immediately because most of the house, it was no, no, no longer livable. And in that upheaval, my husband and I agreed to have, a, uh, to have a divorce. And I faced a future without a home, without a husband. And basically, uh, I was midlife. I was just uh, turning 50 without a job because I had always worked at home, looked after the children and helped my husband in his business. And I faced a very bleak future. I didn't seem to have a purpose. And that was the beginning of what turned my life around because in that moment of almost giving up in despair, I turned to spirit or God or the universe, whatever you, I believe in, in a basically a God. And I said, show me a reason for living or let me die. It was that I'd reached that end of, of my uh, tether, basically. Wow. So what did you do? Well, I went um, to a chapel and for nine days, I kind of made this pact with God. I'm going to come here and pray every day. In the tradition of the Catholic Church, there's, which I was brought up in, there's something called a nine-day novena. It was a kind of nine-day ritual. I went, I lit a candle and I knelt, I sat there and I just basically meditated and prayed and said, I am giving up. I actually don't know what to do. And on the, about the fifth or sixth day, I had, I had an inspiration to go to a place I always went to, which was a bookshop. I loved bookshops to always calm me down and make me feel at peace. For me, they're like cathedrals. And I was browsing through the books when I picked up a book, which was to change my life, called The Journey by Brandon Bayes. And I began to read through it in the bookshop. And I um, read that she had had a fire that was immediately um, connected me to her. But she had healed a tumor the size of a football by doing some inner emotional healing work, among other things. And what I thought was amazing about the story was that she had put the process she used in the book. Although she her, her inspiration in writing the book was to share this with others, and, and she was giving workshops in England at the time, I was amazed that at, her, at her generosity of spirit. And it was like a light bulb went on. 
Little did I know that this book was going to change my life because like all things when we pray and we take baby steps, it began with me thinking South Africa needs this healing work because she spoke about the tumor being linked with lack of forgiveness. And I knew that we were, it was at the time when um, the new South Africa was coming into, into operation. Nelson Mandela had just been released. We were talking about 99, 1999. And part of me Part of my prayer had been show me work that gives me a reason for living, that helps other people, but that also makes me a good living. I had I, those are the three things I stipulated because I knew without money I was I was basically going to be a bag lady. I knew that I had a lot of talent that I wanted to um, use in the world, and the third thing was that I knew I always wanted to help people, but um, you know when was my time going to come? So. Having lost um, everything in the fire, including my dog, my heart had been broken open and I was feeling obviously very traumatized by everything in my life. But as I took the first step to contact her to say, come out to South Africa to help you know, others who are needing to forgive and let go, we are going through a time of transformation. Could you come here? I, I knew I didn't have the money to bring her out. And I thought that that's what a PR, which I was offering to do her publicity and write articles about her. I thought, well, I should really have money to do this, but I don't have anything. Will she, will she come? And I, I won't go into the whole story, but she came because she said she felt the strong thirst in South Africa for healing. And she came out on her own, what she called her own dime with her team. And the, the agreement was she would, sh we would share the profits. Um, and for the next few years, this became my life, actually. And I realized by in learning the healing work with her and in her, she and Brandon Bay is becoming my mentor, everything changed. And I was now on track with my life purpose. And I began to heal my own deep seated issues and, and then help others to break free. Because really, I'd, up to age 50, I was struggling to break free from the basic legacy of my childhood, which I write about and you can break free fast and which is what all my work is basically and based on because I now understand that traumas from childhood linger throughout our life running programs that prevent us living the life we love. How did you develop your approach? After spending four or five years as the, uh, and we had thousands of people, by the way, it became a huge success. We got her on TV and hundreds and hundreds, well, thousands of people came to the workshops. They reached a point, uh, I won't go into it, but September the 11th happened. So my, my trajectory had been, she'd asked me to come with her to England and then America to continue being her pub publicist. But after September the 11th, she said, no, please go back to South Africa. We've got to regroup here. Mm. And at that point, because I had now had a reputation for, for being such a, you know, a successful promoter of her work, I was then approached by other people who wanted to come to South Africa. And then I had the, the gift, really, of, of studying with some of some other great healers like Byron Katie and the Barefoot Doctor. Whoever came to South Africa, they'd say, well, ask Carol to do your workshops, you know, to promote it and to write about it and to sell the tickets. I now had a reputation and a business, you know, which, which was flourishing. But at the same time, I was seeing about 10 people a week because I'd become so skilled in the journey myself, having been a journalist all my life, in this turnaround of changing my life completely, like the phoenix, I rose from the ashes of my, of my deepest despair and became on track with my life purpose. And the gifts I had innate in me were then put to the use that my life purpose uh, had originally in, you know, what enabled me to do. So I was really, uh, you know, looking back, I can see that. But at the time, I was grasping for straws. What should I do next? Spirit, show me the way. Phone Brandon, you know, get some support. Then the, the, the financial support was withdrawn, and yet she continued to come. She said, no, I'm still coming. Hmm. And then I um, heard about EFT and Anne Ross, uh, one of the EFT masters, said she would like me to come to South Africa and would I promote her. And I was quite hesitant because for five years I had been completely immersed in the, in the healing power of the journey. And I wasn't sure that anything that such as an EFT tapping could, could better it. Mm. However, um, and I don't want to, to take the whole interview, you know, with explaining what happened, but basically I had a, a gift from spirit of a person who came to me and he had OCCD. He died under anesthetic briefly and was recovering and um, the ability to live his life. 
he had been three hours late for his journey, what he thought was going to be a journey session. And I said to him, can we try EFT matrix? Uh, I didn't know matrix stream printing. That came later. Can, can we try this tapping thing? Because I don't have three hours to take you through what was essentially a, a, a hypnosis process mm. with the journey. And in tapping and talking on his issues, we went back so quickly to from one thing to the other to the other that he healed in that session. Um, I didn't, you know, I was still new to EFT, but he went away and he said, this has completely changed my life. I had not been able to move out of my house, out of my flat. I was, I would brush my teeth for three hours and not know three hours had gone past. And he said, everything has clicked into place. And I've done seven years of tax and I'm going back to work. And within a few months, he was completely back on his feet. And one of his issues had been throughout his life, had been he had been knocked off his feet. And that particular um, reason that he that he wasn't healing was that he feared that if he got really knocked off his feet, he would end up in a wheelchair, not die. He had died already. He wasn't scared of death. And what then happened was in that EFT session, he went back from, I took him back like I still do, you know, from one memory to the, at least to another and looking for the earliest one as we do in the journey, but we also do in EFT. And when he was two, he was learning, and he'd forgotten this, but when he was two, he was learning to walk. And as he got up on his feet, his brother had punched him in the stomach and knocked him off his feet. Mm. And then all the other stories we had healed throughout his life had included his brother, had usually involved his brother knocking him off his feet, so to speak, metaphorically. And I was just, you know, it's one of those processes you'll never forget because I saw how EFT worked in one hour to get to the root cause of what was um, preventing him healing. And um, from then on, I just knew I was being guided to use EFT uh, in a, in a, and I began to train people with it. Uh, you know, I, I became one of the pioneers of EFT in South Africa at that time. And of course, today, looking back 10 years later, at that time, Rob, we didn't understand the, the neuroscience that has since developed, which enables us to talk about EFT in a completely different way. Hmm. We were just, the only analogy we had for people was that, that it was like um, emotional acupuncture, that we were somehow tapping into the meridians, which was storing past trauma. But it's so amazing that through the work of Dr. Scare and Bruce Lipton and a lot of the um, neuroscientists out, you know, that we know more and more and more about how trauma works, how the brain works. And today it's the most uh, beautiful technique to, to use, uh, you know, and to explain to, to, to medical professionals. And at the same time, it embraces the law of attraction when you use it with the advanced technique called matrix re-imprinting. And that, that is how my story, my own story developed, that I um, continued to work with these great teachers from all over the world, continued to progress teaching EFT. And I was called to Namibia and to uh, Dubai, wherever, I, wherever people heard about me, I was invited at that time. And then I met the love of my life. And that was one of the goals. When I talk about my goal success process in Matrix Goals Reimprinting, I talk about the fact that you have to choose one golden goal and focus on it. And I learned this because, as you can probably hear from the way I talk, I have many, many interests going on at once. I can I can embrace many goals. I, you know, there's usually about 100 goals I'd like to achieve. But because I was in a situation in South Africa with where money, I had to earn a living and be on track with my life purpose. I didn't really have time to think about other issues like my health, you know, my, my weight issues or meeting the dream, man of my dreams. They were all part of my goals. But I had to focus on what I call one golden goal at a time, get myself stabilized, financially viable, and then move on to the next goal, so to speak, put all my energy into that. And we, after, it was actually six years, I'd, in that time, I began to do some internet dating. And each time I had an experience internet dating, because I was using the law of attraction, but also clearing the blocks to the relationship of my dreams. And of course, P, in internet dating, it's it's a, a fantastic um, ground for, for actually realizing that people are treating you according to your inner beliefs. So if someone didn't want to commit, I realized, well, where in myself don't I want to commit? And then I had the tools to go or to get help from a, a fellow, you know, therapist, practitioner, to look for the part of me that was within me was the belief that the people dating me were only demonstrating. 
you know, I've, I've reached that point of um, using myself as a guinea pig and saying, okay, he's rejected you. Well, you know, what is it about you that still doesn't um, embrace yourself? And of course, I'd learned this from Byron Katie, from the journey, from EFT, and from the law of attraction that as without, so within. Anyway, the day came when I did meet the man of my dreams, and that's a whole other story. And I have written a book on online dating and how uh, this works to clear the blocks so that you can then envisage in a goal, um, you know, exactly what you want in a partner. But in that time, the first three years I was married, I was still, and I wrote my book, A Break Free Fast, I still saw that the clearing process and the law of attraction process were separate. And you had to fill the void that you had cleared with the law of attraction. Of course, I was very committed to the healing work of the law of attraction work of Abraham Hicks. And that was in the year 2000 before they had become famous and been picked up by Hay House. They were just sending out their little tape recordings at that time. But I was practicing that at the same time as I was clearing. And one day I saw Carl Dawson doing EFT Matrix re-imprinting on YouTube. And I realized that what we do in matrix re-imprinting, because I then went on to train and to promote him in South Africa, to pioneer it in South Africa, because that was what my calling always seemed to be, was to put these new things on the map. In that training, I came to see that in one hour session, you can explode a damaging belief, explode or heal, however you look at it. I see them as trauma bubbles that we go and unpack, unpick, and then release. And at the same time, you can flip the belief and help the person in the same session with matrix re-imprinting to um, Im- embed the memory or the mind and the, and the whole uh, memory field, the matrix we call it, with a new empowering positive memory. Mm. So it's, I was led beyond just doing the clearing and the law of attraction as separate entities to a place where you could do the two together. And that is that then became the greatest uh, development for me because I could see how I could help my clients who, of course, I had clients from all over the world that I was working with on Skype, but I could see an advanced way of, um, you know, working with clients. Yeah. What do you believe makes this approach so different from other approaches that teach goal setting? Yes, well, I mean, I I should then say that I realized that having been a Capricorn my whole life and, and, and fascinated by goals, I then spoke to Carl and said, I want to explain my goal setting process, but use matrix re imprinting and call it matrix goals re imprinting. And he said, Great, go ahead. And so that was the Bible Goal Success. I then put the EFT, the matrix re imprinting, and the five steps that I've developed uh, to produce goal setting and getting into the matrix goals re imprinting session. So, what we have here is five steps that each step of the way we are using the clearing and the re-imprinting. And now, why this is important to answer your question is that if we just, you know, let's just say the average goal setting process, and I've got a lot of respect for, you know, most of them have all got pieces that I put together in my own system. But what is different about mine is that step one, let's say, where I say, let's get inspired. Don't just say, that is the goal I'm going for. I'm going to, you know, New Year's, let's say New Year's Day comes, someone says, I'm going to lose weight this year. Um, these, this is what I'm going to do. And they follow the normal goal setting protocol, you know, be specific, be smart, put, the, you know, get something going. That's all okay. But if you have an underlying, what I call a goal trauma, something that is going to stop you, you're never going to achieve that goal. You may A, have chosen the wrong goal in the first place. You may B, have chosen too many goals. And you may see, be choosing a goal for for someone because your say your spouse says you've put on too much weight. Let's say we're talking about weight loss. So in my system, because we are going back to our childhood traumas, let's say to write a book. That's a very common one where I've helped people, and and, and no one really knows why they're getting stuck or can't write a book. They you know they they just think they don't have the tools. They don't know if that's their goal for the year. I want to write a book. They don't understand why they might be getting stuck or why an old program is running. And let me give you an example. Someone phoned me and said, "I've moved to the country. I sold my business, and I'm trying to write. I've got." I want to write a novel, but I also am doing some freelance writing work. So we began to do this work, tapping and talking. Well, the memory she went back to, you know, was the fact that when she was 11 and she was 
in love with writing and poetry, she went to her father, who was a Supreme Court judge in South Africa, and said, and shared this from her heart. And he had said these words in a very authoritative way. You can't just be a writer. And so she had gone off and, and become a caterer, actually. But you can see that when she had then sold her business and was ready to write, this old program, unbeknownst to her until she she unearthed it in, in her tapping session, was holding her back from actually just being a writer. And that was just a very clear to me example of how these hidden agenda, let's say, these hidden beliefs from our childhood can hold us back. So you asked me, well, then what makes your system so special? Well, in one session, before you even set out on your goals getting journey, we have cleared some of the big blocks that would have probably tripped you up along the way. And you might have just ended up with a half finished book in your drawer and just thought, I'm a procrastinator or maybe I'm a perfectionist, whatever it is, I, I, I can't write my book or I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a failed book writer, so to speak. I'm a failed author. Mm. But can you see the difference if you have really, and at any step of the way you can do that, Rob, you see, that's, that's just step one, getting inspired. I mean, step two is getting focused. Now, you might find you've got inspired, you've chosen one goal, and now suddenly halfway through the year, you lose your focus. Something comes up. You've, you've, um, something's upset you and it's triggered you and you, for some reason, can't write. We will use the book analogy. Again, we can stop and do the clearing, which may have nothing to do with the actual writing. It might have to do with, um, your, let's say, a divorce or, or getting, uh, losing, um, losing your partner. And, and that is so that that affects you so badly that you can't even think of your writing. Well, if you can go to someone like a EFT Matrix reimprinting or someone like myself and clear the emotional wound of that particular trauma, which inevitably has triggered you because it goes back to childhood abandonment of some kind. If you can just pause in your goal setting um, endeavors of writing that book, do the work to clear because we have this process work and then go back to your writing, the, the difference will be very huge. And and not only do we have uh, in a matrix uh, goals reimprinting session the ability to look to the past to what has uh, that could be holding us back, but the exciting thing is once you're in the matrix, which is the energy field where there is no time, there is no you know there's yeah there's no time. You can then find a future self who has already achieved the goal. Now you don't just go into the future before you have gone into the past. Now, this is a very key difference to other goal setting things, which say, well, I can imagine myself in the future. I'm a writer. I'm an author. And they, they, they just try and do an affirmative embedding into their mind of, of uh, affirmations. But I'm saying, no, you will find that future self as my, um, you know, as, as the people who say want to write a book do in after they've cleared the past. They then step in and see themselves as a future author five years from now. They connect with that author. They connect with themselves, how they're feeling, and they amp up all that, which is an NLP technique. But they also ask that future self, what is it that you've done that you can recommend I should do now to become you? And having listened, and sometimes they will even look at the book. I mean, this future self can even show you the finished book and go through it sometimes. They can see the chapter contents. I mean, it can get to that point um, as well. But let's just say they see her holding the book. And then what I ask them to do, and we associate with that future goal successful person. We step into them. Now, mainly when you're doing this work, you do not associate with the parts of you that were the inner child, let's say, or the echoes from the past. You don't become them. You go and help them. You facilitate their healing. But when it comes to the future, you can step in and stay associated with all the feelings of achieving your goal. And then we would come back. We would re-imprint this, which I haven't gone into in this um, interview so far, how you re-imprint the positive, empowering belief and memory. And that is where, where can you see the difference then with uh, other goal setting um, systems? Mm, absolutely. I'm interested to learn more about the five steps to fun and fearless goal success program that you offer. Could you explain more about that and how that fits in? What I um, wanted to do, I, you know, I put my book up on Kindle, the goal success process in there, but I realized that people need more. So I wanted to do a product. I wanted to produce a product that was audio and video and explains the, the, the five steps so that whether people have access to a therapist or not, they can begin especially if they already know how to do tapping, they can begin to set their goals on track. So I've, I developed the Fun and Fearless Goal Success Program and it has three levels. There's the you know, self-help, do it yourself. 
based on everything that I've got in my book and what I teach. And then there's there will be webinars and a Facebook group for those who want a bit more group help. And finally, there's a level where they can work with me one-on-one. And obviously, the people who want to do that will see the results beyond their dreams. But overall, it is a program I, I where I've brought all this together, the, the, the five steps. Shall I go through what the steps are? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Well, the first step, and at the end of this interview, I'd like to to give um, the listeners an actual exercise that comes from the first step, which is getting inspired. And this exercise, well, I'll share it now. This this is the place where you dream big, but some people say, well, I don't know what, I've got so many goals. I don't know, you know, where am I going to start? What, you know, I think I want to do this, but then I want to do that. And I had this amazing exercise, which I learned from a mentor when I once went to New York and went to her workshop. Her name is Barbara Scher. And she wrote a book called Wishcraft. Anyway, this, I want to just honor her for for the process. But what you do is, it's called the day from hell and the day from heaven. And you sit down and you write the, the worst nightmare of a day that you can imagine, you know, experiencing. So I did this, oh, it must be 20, 30 years ago. And the first thing I wrote was my day from hell would be to commute in heavy traffic in a city to go to a shop and stand in high heels all day, uh, telling people about, you know, say a dress shop, or what clothes to wear and, um, you know, just standing there all day. I would be bored out of my mind. I would be tired on my feet and then I would have a commute home. So, I, you know, I went through, you go through in detail, what, what is your idea of a day from hell? And then having realized, um, you know, having put that to one side, you then, then do the, the fun part, which is what is a day from heaven? What is my ideal day? And the big revelation when I first did this was that I like to start the day quietly. At that time, my children were small. I used to have to basically get them ready for school. And I realized I need to get up slowly, my ideal day. I get up, I meditate, I journal. And then I progress into the day bit by bit. I then have my breakfast. And by the afternoon, I, I used to say I ride my cycle. I live in a village and I ride my cycle down to the down to the village, do some errands and then spend some time with those, with my love, with my partner, the man of my dreams and friends in the evening. So my day got progressively gregarious, but the the, the essence was to get up early and, and have that, that power hour that what some people call and I began to do that getting up at five and and it's one of the things I teach to this day and there are many other goal setting people who also teach this now you know from Anthony Robbins to Robin uh, Sharma they're every they're people who who recommend this but for me it was a light bulb moment that is what I need to have a productive, happy day, to live the life I love. And to this day, I still do it. I still get up at five or six. And um, usually my husband's still asleep. You know, we live on the Isle of Wight. I live the life I love. But I treasure that time to meditate, to be quiet and to journal. And I often get my best ideas and um, insights and intuition in the, in in that time when when it's um, so peaceful and I'm so connected with, with, with my, you know, with my inner truth. So once you've got inspired, and this would be one way to get inspired you could then take the look at your your exercise you've done and then um you know make a day an ideal day which is practical to your life right now and then say well gosh i didn't realize i didn't want to work for someone else i'm an entrepreneur i'm, I'm a i'm a coach you know that, that's a very common one where people don't want to you know, want to escape the cubicle nation and, and uh, you know, start to do a different, live a different kind of day and, and work from home perhaps. And in doing that, you can start to move towards that goal. It, I'm not saying a person who makes that realization is going to jump up immediately, but let's say they make it a golden goal to do something towards this particular dream. And I usually say a golden goal you choose when you when you get focused out of all the goals and I have a system in in part in step two you go through you actually choose 10 goals and then distill them into five and then distill the one that you're going to give all your energy to throughout that year however I have found it can take 18 months sometimes it's not always exactly a neat 12 months that you achieve that particular goal but what I found is um, by doing that step one and then step two and choosing the golden goal which is to get your focus by the time you get to the get clear part get inspired get clear get focused so once you've cleared the blocks you then get the focus and then I say step four is get going and step five is keep going And the get going part is to take immediate action 
and then to revise as you keep going and to clear the blocks as you go along your way. So you can see, I mean, the, the, the steps are pretty simple, but what makes them extraordinary is that you are using the EFT matrix re-imprinting, the law of attraction, and all put together in matrix goals re-imprinting to set your goals and then to get them. Got it. Okay. Before we wrap up, Carol, is there anything you'd like to add in context of what we've spoken about today? So to wrap up, Rob, I'd like to offer the listeners a PDF of that exercise, which I described, so that they can go back and go and actually start to use it to find out their day from heaven and their day from hell and put it together. And I'd be very interested to hear feedback from people who um, immediately maybe came to an aha realization about what they really want to do with their life. And of course, what I've come to understand is that you might be asking the, the question, well, what's my life purpose? But when you do your goal setting this way, if you've been like a ship uh, going off track with your life purpose, this brings you back on track. It's like a compass. Living the life you love is actually a compass needle, which will show you your purpose, will show you your passion, and will show you the way to your prosperity and peace. So it's not just about material goals. It's about getting your, the life you love in all its dimensions and beauty and joy. So I think that's what I'd like to offer that promise to people who work, you know, who, who are lo- interested in looking into this method of a matrix girls reimprinting for their own um, well-being and um, mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. Carol, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Rob. It's been a pleasure. Get your free copy of your day from heaven versus your day from hell exercise at writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash perfect day and start creating and manifesting your dream life faster. The link again, www.writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash perfect day. The links will be in the podcast show notes.